All right. Let's get started here. Uh, what am I going to ask? I need to know the 19 different types of stresses you can calculate and uh, all of the equations that you've used to get them so far. Uh, Steinhubble. It's a joke, Stein Hubble. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Stein Hubble said that I picked on him as if he came in late, he knew better, so he had to run all the way. So that was kind of a joke between him and me. Short review about how strong concrete is. Concrete is about that strong in a test machine. 0.85 for the rate of loading that we usually do, which is pretty slow. It's a little less strong. That is the stress that you're permitted to put on the area one under the plate. The area one and the area two being equal at any time, that's just like when you test it where the little corners fall off. Therefore, all you're going to get is that much strength, 0.85 FC prime A1. If, on the other hand, your plate is on, you've already had to make the concrete bigger, and area two exceeds area one, since these little corners aren't going to tend to flake off because they're contained within this loading zone, you get the square root of A2 over A1 increase up to the point where A2 is four times as big as A1, and then that's just about all you can get. And so they limit it to that number. The plate itself can be on a wall, and if it is on a wall, then you are permitted to say that area 2 for the concrete is geometrically similar to the shape of area 1 for the plate. So if you put it in the middle of the plate and there's a little bit of concrete hanging out, then you get to count that G. You get to count that G. You have to make this geometrically similar. So that's G and that's G. Square plate, then you can go square concrete until the area 2 concrete becomes four times or greater than area 1, in which case you got to quit. If it's a rectangular plate, can have a rectangular shape. Here's one on a 16 by 10 column. The plate itself is 6 by 6. So that means you got 2 inches hanging off on either side, so you can only count 2 inches on either end, 10 by 10. Here's one where they put the plate they needed to, a little closer to the edge of the wall. The beam must be coming in from this side. So regardless, if they can't get it in the middle or don't want it in the middle for some reason, then G on that side gets to let you count G all the way around. Area 2 being the area of the concrete, area 1 being the area of the plate. If you say, oh, sorry, but the plate's got to go right on the edge, then basically you're talking about steel right on the edge where these things can flake off. They're not at all contained. Therefore, area 1 is equal to area 2. And again, the ridiculous region where area 1 is 10 square inches and area 2 is 500 square inches, no way. The limit is 4 to 1. So square root of 2 is 1.7. Oh, so square root of 4 is 2 times 0.85. 2 times that is 1.7. That's your limit. Here are the references. Here are the pages you can find them. That's the equation itself is J8-2. Now, this is, of course, where I'm changing back to Segui's new text. All of the stuff you and I have been doing so far have the same words, same picture, same everything else, but they were, they had all of my notes on there. What you and I have done so far is we found out how long, first off, we found out how much strength this thing has in shear. And that's that phi sub 
V, V sub N, V nominal and shear, something like that. We had an equation for it, and it's listed in the Z tables for the beams. You could be asked to work it out. If you were given something besides the 50 KSI steel in the beam, you'd have to work that out. You wouldn't be able to just pull it from the tables. That will be acceptable as long as you can get the load up into the web and have it travel completely through the web, through the web. If you make this plate so short that this steel on this surface right here reaches F sub Y before you've got the full reaction, then the beam is still good for this. It's just that you have crushed a part of the beam locally and you have to uh, reduce the load. Or you have to make a longer plate so that this will not yield when the web gets to its thinnest point and that point is at K design. That's where, the, that's where the little radius peaks out. He just calls it K, but there's a K detail and a K design. For heaven's sakes, don't pick up the detailing thing. That's to make sure you can fit a bolt head in there and fit a wrench in there. And on the top, rather than the load spreading out at one of these two and a half to one ratios, on the top it spreads out at two. So. The length of the plate is set so that you don't crush the material. A second thing that you had to find out how long the plate needs to be is even if it doesn't crush the material, the stresses could be so high in that thin web that you will cripple, you will locally buckle the web. And that were those nasty equations, and buckling is always a problem, and it's especially a problem if you're talking about around something that's thin and unsupported in this region. And that's why there were so many equations. It was one equation that if the load was further back than the depth of the beam, you had an equation. If, on the other hand, the load was closer to the end of the beam than one depth of the beam, you had another but a set of equations one for short plates and one for long plates. And of course, short and long plates aren't defined really. It's just you say, well, I think it's short. You put the numbers in and you solve for how long the plate's going to be and it turned out to be long. Well, you lose. Sorry. Go get the other equation. And here were those equations. This was uh, if the load was back away from the support, and here's if it was near the support. And then depending on whether it was a short plate or a long plate, and all that's specified in the, in the specs. Resistance factor in all cases was 0.75 on this one, because buckling isn't really that, ability, that able to be predicted with uh, much more accuracy than that. We talked about the concrete strength do the concrete strength. Now then we get off onto how thick the plate needs to be. You found two things. Number one, you found the strength of the entire shape in shear. Number two, you found out how long this needs to be such that it does not crush the steel and yield, and how long this needs to be so that the web does not cripple. Now then, the one number we haven't yet done is how thick does the plate need to be? Because I know some people, they're cheap. Here's the footing. Here's the wide flange. And here's the plate. They made it long enough and wide enough, and that's what they did. They made it out of tinfoil. And then they put the column on the top of it. Well, not going to work. The problem is, is when this load comes down on the plate, it will just curl the edges of the plate up, and again, then you'll crush the concrete right underneath the web. So we also have to know how thick the plate needs to be. And as in everything else we do, we're going to allow the plate to be fully yielded for the design. Back to the old book where all my notes are.
Yours again, as you see, this is what your text says. Once the length and width, plate thickness, once the length and width, width, no difference. Once you've determined how long the plate has to be so that the web is okay, and then the combination of how long the plate should be and how wide it should be so that the concrete is not hurt, then the third dimension of a plate would be its thickness. What we're going to do is we're going to take the average bearing pressure between the plate and the concrete. We're going to pretend it is uniformly distributed. That's not 100% true. Probably uh, since the load comes down through the plate and bends the plate, there's probably somewhat less stress in this area than there is in the middle, but it's not significant enough to bother us. We'll just assume it is uniform. Also, we're going to have to know how long the plate is hanging out. The number one these flanges are, you go take a look, they're really very thin. So we just ignore any bending strength that they contribute to the whole system. And we ask that this beam put a line load on this plate and the plate itself take all the bending. One thing is, the load really comes down here right about at K sub design, and it falls down into the plate beneath it pretty much at a 45 degree angle. Now, some people have a hard time with that. They say, well, you had a plate here, and it was feeding up here at a rate of two and a half to one. Mainly that's because it's really going through the web, and the web is connected to the flanges, and it just all kind of connected together. That slope was pretty gentle. This slope in the first place couldn't even hardly get past this corner at a two and a half to one slope. And they found that it's okay to say that this load comes down as a uh, 45 degree angle. Therefore, this base plate is really cantilevers about that line right there. Now, if you wanted to take the length of this cantilevered beam as half of its width would be on the safe side, but it just saves some money and it's not necessary. You can say it's cantilevered right there. Incidentally, you will notice that the old Segui text and the old specs had fee for concrete as 0.6. And as we find ways to make it more consistently and make sure the concrete's got more uh, uniform properties and learn how to get it delivered on time in the whole nine yards, the ACI is watching this all the time. All of a sudden, it just says 0.65 from today on. That's why you'll see in the notes here, if you ever see a 0.6 somewhere, I just forgot to change it. It is now 0.65 on the concrete, which is pretty bad already. That's one of the worst numbers I've seen. The worst numbers I've seen on the work you and I do is about how low. 0.75 is about the worst one I remember. All right. Now, here's the picture, and here's what we're doing. Basically, this is the top view of the beam. Here's the beam's web. Here is the flange of the beam. This is the top flange. There's another one on the bottom. Here is your plate that you're putting underneath there. You have made this plate wide enough, B, and long enough, L sub B. The old code or the old specs used to call it N, so you'll see that both are used in here. So that the concrete was happy, was not overstressed. This is a one-way bending situation. In other words, as I showed you right back here, this is a line load on a plate. Basically, here's your plate. And this is a line, not, not quite a line, but kind of a line load on the plate. It would be a line if you just said the load came right down as a line. But see, it's actually spread over this area. That's K design and K design. This width right here is 2K design. That's the load down on the plate. 
You'll notice it causes the plate to curl up in one direction only. In other words, there's no bending about these axes. So it's one-way bending. Second picture is, or the first picture here is, I don't know how long you're going to make this. This is probably what we're going to solve for. We're going to have to find out how long it needs to be to keep the concrete happy. And... I'm sorry, to design the plate thickness. And I want to take just a one-inch strip out of your plate and analyze a one-inch strip. I want to find out how strong it is. Then when I find out how strong it is, I'll multiply that strength times L sub B, and L sub B will be for you to decide how many of these one-inch strips we've got. If I show you how to safely design one one-inch strip, how much load it'll take, then all you got to do is multiply how strong a one inch wide strip is times how long you decide to make the plate and then uh, I, we can design the plate's thickness. On the top of the plate, here you'll notice there's the pressure from the web. This is an end view of the plate. Here is the load falling down at a 45 degree from the beginning of the fillet, uh, the reentrant corner right there at a 45 degree. So this is K design, K design. The width of your plate, you've already figured that out. Well, you may not have figured it out. You could, you could still leave it as an unknown. Is going to be B and the length of the plate back in this direction is going to be N. Or L sub B. Take your choice what you want to call that. So your beam is going to cantilever out. Let me calculate this. B cut in half minus K sub design. That's how long your steel plate is hanging out from the point about which it cantilevers. Uh, or you can do it this way. N plus K plus K plus N. N plus K plus K plus N is equal to B. That says N plus K is equal to B over 2. That's what we just said. N is equal to B over 2 minus K design. That's the length of your plate cantilever. Here is, and there's figures everywhere here. <clears throat> here is that little one inch piece cantilevered out. You notice it's cantilevered out a dimension N. There's your N from where it's cantilevered out. You'll notice underneath it is a pressure. The pressure underneath this thing is the total reaction that you've asked to support divided by B times N. That's force over area. Load over area is the stress <clears throat> between the bottom of the plate and the concrete. So here's your stress. I'm going to multiply that stress times one inch wide times n inches long. That right here would be the force. See the force under the plate. Stress times area. The centroid of that force is at half of this length out from the cantilevered part where the beam is supported and over two. So that says the ultimate requested moment is your pressure underneath the beam, R sub U over BN, multiplied times the surface area against it which it presses, 1 times N, times the moment arm is N over 2. Crank that out, R sub U N squared over 2 B L sub B, R sub U N squared over 2 B L sub B. It probably has that somewhere down in here. Here it is right here. R sub U N squared over 2 B L sub B. Now that's how much load is 
being placed on your plate, a one inch wide strip only. The next question is, how strong is your plate? Well, here's your plate. Here it is. Here's A, D, C. I got a B and an E. I got all kinds of stuff here. Here's A, D, C. B is the top and E is down on the bottom. Here's your plate sticking out. Cutting through it at the wall, I notice that your stresses, there are no stresses because right now you didn't put any load on it. Then you put some reaction, not this much, but it caused this stress right there. Then you doubled that number and the stresses looked like that. And then you quadrupled it and the first time any fiber yielded is right now. Mark it. Then you put some more load on there. This fiber is not going to take any more stress. It's going to stay at the yield stress. This fiber will now reach yield and all those. Then put some more load. That fiber reaches yield. And then this fiber reaches yield and you fully yield to the top and you fully yield to the bottom. That's the game we've been playing ever since we've been in here. Fully yield everything. First thing, do you think we're going to have to worry about something locally buckling? Not at all. There won't be any chance that something will locally buckle. It's a flat plate. In other words, things used to locally buckle if the top flange had a lot of force in it acting over the whole thing. But if you take a plate and you bend it such that at the top it's in compression, the bottom it's in tension, they're so close together, there's nothing there can buckle. So here's how strong it is. I think I got a better picture over here. Here's your one inch strip. Here is, here is the end of that one inch strip. It's loaded all underneath here with pressure from the concrete on your bottom of your plate. You are putting, I got the moment shown in this direction. I only It is in that direction, but I couldn't put it out here. That's what I really should do because it looks a little fishy. Is show it like this, same direction, like that. Compression on the top tension on the bottom. See the little squares? How high is this? F sub Y, of course. Every little fiber is yielded. How high is this? Hint, hint. T over 2. How wide is this? 1 inch. You want to know how much force is inside that little stress block? It's F sub Y times T over 2 times 1 inch. That's how much force a plate can develop on the top half in compression. This is how much it can carry in tension. F sub Y times T over 2 times 1 inch wide. The total plastic moment due to those two forces is either this force times T over 4 plus this force times T over 4, or since it's a couple, you can just come here in some moments about this point, take either one of them and multiply it times T over 2, and you obviously get the same answer. Nominal moment is yield stress times T over 2 times 1 times the distance between the couple forces. That's how strong a plate is. F sub Y thickness squared divided by 2. Now that's how long, strong it is really is on average. What an optimist this guy is. I caught you. I saw you. Checking your watch. We just started, man. It couldn't possibly be time to go. <laughs> yeah, wait for spring break. I tell you what, I'm proud of you. The, the fact that half of you came, that's, that's a good sign. <laughs> That means that only half of the structures on earth will collapse after you, ha after you all get out. B, the design strength, is nine-tenths of that number. So now we know the strength of the plate, and now we know the ultimate request for a moment on the plate. 
All we do is we set the strength of the plate, including the resistance factor, to take into account variation. Uh, 9 tenths F sub Y T squared over 4 has to be larger than that available. R sub U N squared over 2 B L sub B in the new book and in the new specs, and solve for T. Now, that's a really nifty equation, and I highly recommend you write it in your manual somewhere, because it's not in there. And students usually say, how can it not be in there? Everything is in there. Well, it is in there, because on everything we've ever done, if you remember, he told us that uh, M sub U must be less than or equal to phi in bending times Z sub X. Plastic moment. Or uh, phi sub B, Z sub X, excuse me. That's, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for M sub, M sub nominal. Where N sub nominal is equal to Z times F sub Y. Phi M sub nominal. F sub Y times Z sub X. He says, I did tell you that. I said, yeah, but it took me two pages to get to how thick a plate ought to be. He says, it's not my problem. I don't tell you how to do things. I tell you what you should do. You should do this. And if a plate has a complex derivation on how thick it ought to be, it's not my problem. That's your problem. When you show up on quiz B and you don't have that thing noted somewhere and look for it in the book, look here, because there it is right there. You will be a little slower than everybody else. That's how thick your plate should be, right there. That's how thick your plate should be. Not in the specs. Write it in there. Old pop quiz, how much load could you place on this plate? It was a 12 by 8 plate. It was 3 quarters inch thick. I asked them how much uniform load you could put on there in pounds per square inch. And you can check it out. Turned out to be 89 pounds per square inch. So here we have an example. Design a bearing plate to distribute the reaction of a W21 by 68. Span length is 15 feet 10 inches, center to center. Service load is 9 kips per foot along the length of the beam. Half of the 9, 4.5 kip per foot is dead, and half, because it says equal parts, 4.5 kip per foot for life. It's to be supported on a reinforced concrete wall. Strength of the concrete is 3,500. For the beam, we're using 50 KSI steel. And he's going to use 36 KSI steel for the plate. The reason being, it's really worth it to, to buy a really high-strength steel to make the beam, because that's long and 30 feet long, and uh, even though it costs a little more per pound, you have so, so many less pounds. The plates, they don't care. The plates are just like channels. They're just like angles. There's not that much to them. And so he's going to make the plate out of a weaker steel. It'll turn out to be a little thicker, but it'll still be cheaper in the long run. Factored load, 1.2 dead, 1.6 live. There's half of your 9, there's half of your 9, 12.6 kip per foot. Uh, I'm assuming he's already got the 68 pounds per foot in there because he already knows what beam he's talking about, so that's <coughs> doubtless in the dead load. Reaction is... There's your 12.6 kip per foot. That's the length of the beam. Half of the reaction goes on each end. This beam has to carry 99.73 kips. Of course, his whole purpose here is to show us how to design the plate, but I'm a little surprised that he didn't go find out for a 21 by 68 what is V sub V, V sub NX the minute he found out the required reaction. He says, well, yeah, but you know this almost never controls. Yeah, okay, but I'd expect my students to make sure this beam's okay, that it will hold that much shear. 
whether or not I can get it in the web before it cripples or whether I can get it in the web before it yields, <clears throat> I don't know. But this is the first step. There's your reference. It's on that page. There are no shear stresses in the plates. That's true. There just are none. And then, no, not, there won't be any possibility that it'll fail in shear. Or to fail in shear, you got to have a force up on one side and a force down on the other side, and something in between it that you're worried about if it's going to shear. Well, there's on, on a plate that's underneath this, there's no force up that's not offset by a force down. You know, if you say, well, it's not what you showed me right here. Yeah, yeah, that's impossible. Well, it is, to tell you the truth. Well, but no, it's just not possible. In other words, the only place it's going to happen is going to happen right here. You know, and it's just too thick. All right, so now that I'm willing to I know that the beam is least okay, there's a reason to proceed, I'm going to determine how long the bearing plate should be so that I do not crush the relatively thin web after it gets out of the flange and out of the K design into the thin part. That equation is very straightforward, and there's only one or two choices. One if it's on the end of the beam, the load spreads out one of these K design times 2.5. If it were on the top, then that load would spread out at two times a slope of two and a half. There'd be a two and a half on this side and a two and a half on that side for a total of five plus the length of the plate. But it's not. It's on the end. Therefore, the reaction is equal to uh, the, surf the area that's yielding is along this line. That's where the equation 16.1-134 on that page came from. 2.5K plus the length of the bearing plate. Area times stress. Excuse me. That's length times width. That's area times the yield stress. That's the nominal strength. You're going to have to remember to multiply it times phi before you play with it. Turns out that is such a reliable number and so subject to just almost no variation, phi is a 1. Check it out on these pages. There's your 2.5. Here is your K for a W, 21 by 68. Here's a W... 21 by 68. Here is 1.19 for K design. 1.19. Plus, I don't know how long you're going to make the plate yet, but I got this in the equation here. This whole thing is multiplied times 50 KSI steel in the web, not in the plate, times the thickness of the web. Thickness of the web of uh, 21 by 68, 0.43 inches. And therefore, it has to be greater than 99.73 kips, which is the request. Which saw for else to be out of there, the plate has to be 1.66 inches long. Here is the top view of the beam. Here's the web down there. Here's the concrete footing. If you want to make that 1.66 inches wide to keep the concrete happy, dang thing had to be 40 feet long. Okay, I don't like that. You know, this is not an airplane with wings. You don't want these plates sticking out that long, so we're going to definitely make it longer than the minimum just to get a reasonable sized plate. But I don't know, maybe something else. We hadn't considered crippling yet, so let's do crippling. There's no two values of K are given, K design and K uh, for de uh, detailing. <clears throat> Continuing. There's first off, it's pretty assured that this is not going to be down here further than one d depth of the beam. So it's going to be close to the end. 
That puts this off into two equations. Trying to find, no, if I still have those equations, let's see if I happen to have them. Don't think so. So I'll leave it for you to, to check. If you remember, there were two choices. Anytime this thing was closer than 1D, one depth, you had a choice of a short plate equation and a long plate equation. And they were slightly different. This was for a long plate. He says, look, there's no way to tell. I'm just going to assume this is a long plate, plug in the numbers, see how long the thing needs to be. First check if it is a long plate, according to that equation, and then if it is, we move on. The equation was relative. Oh, here the equations are right here. <clears throat> this was with uh, n over d was greater than 0.2. That's pretty. That's a pretty long plate. And here's when n over d was less than 0.2. That was for a short plate. The numbers are 0 0.75. 0 0.4 is 0 0.4. Experimental. The thickness of the web, you remember, was 0.43 from the dimensions table squared onto 1 plus. Now here the equations get a little different. This one's a 4n over d minus 0.2. This one's a 3n over d. So it's just this term is different. Then the remaining terms are the same. Square root of e, f sub y, thickness of the flange, thickness of the web, they're the same past that point. So we're taking a chance that it's a long plate. That's 4 times L sub b, or n, divided by the depth of the beam, 21.1. Depth of the beam, W21 plus 68. Depth of the beam, 21.1 inches from the detailing table. And 21.1 minus 0.2. Parentheses closed, thickness of the web, thickness of the flange to the 1.5 square root of 29,000. F sub yield is, I thought we were using A36 plate. Uh, oh, this is the web, isn't it? We're working with the web crippling, not the plate crippling. Good point. 50 KSI steel, A992 times the thickness of the flange is 0.685 here and here is greater than the request. All you got to do is solve for L sub B out of that equation. Now you can square things and square root things and move things on every side of the equation and then subtract from this side and divide by 21.1 if you want to. I wouldn't even touch it with a stick unless I'm taking a quiz or something. Uh, I'd use EES. Did I tell you about EES? I did, didn't I? I love it. Or Excel or MATLAB or Maple. In the Excel, if you say, I don't see how you solve it, you use a thing called a, a what-if analysis or a solver routine. Very nice. Put the equation in, and EES will go, boop, it's three. That's the answer. That, that's the only thing that fits in there that makes this side equal to that side. And, of course, in the, equa in the equation, you put equal. Of course, it has to be equal or greater than. Now, let's see if it was a long plate. Surely, you wouldn't pick the wrong one. We're supposed to be checking the length of the plate divided by the depth of the beam. That's 3-inch long plate divided by 21.1. Dang, it isn't a long plate. It's, it's not less than... It's not... Uh, greater than 0.2. It's less than 0.2. That means we use the wrong equation. Who cares? Because I got this one programmed in EES just as well. And I put all the numbers up at the top and then put the two equations down and just see which one is right. Using that one, turns out it doesn't have to be 3 inches long. It only has to be 2.59. Question is, is that a short plate? Well, you put the 2.59 in there, and it can't can't turn out anything else since it wasn't the other one. It has to be short. It is short, and therefore the length of the plate is 2.59. So good deal. Rather than having this stupid 1.66 plate 
about 30 feet long, we now have a plate that's only this long. Nonsense. All I got to know is I got to make sure that I have enough plates so the web doesn't cripple and the web doesn't yield. I'm going to go pick a plate. I'm just going to pick something as long as it's bigger than all those numbers. Now, he says, with years and years of experience, let's try six inches. Do I think he did that the first time, even with that experience? I really doubt it. My guess is he tried eight inches, and it turned out that the plate looked like this. Here's your wide flange, and the plate looked like that. He says, okay, that's no good. I don't want the thing rocking around on that plate. I at least want B to equal to the flange width. So it was try six. And a six worked out fine. Prying in is equal to six. Then all we got to do now is find out how thick the plate has to be. Uh, let's see. First we got to do the, the length for the concrete. Then we'll determine how thick the plate has to be. You have decided to now make this six inches then your total load spread over a B by 6 plate must not hurt the concrete. Here again is your ultimate request. <clears throat> it's V for concrete times P sub nominal. They call it P sub P. We don't have any choice but to use their symbols since it's their game. But you and I would call that the nominal force that we're requesting. Our strength was 0.85 FC prime times area 1. We don't know that. It could be that the plate could be much smaller than the wall and we might be able to get a little thinner plate because of it and not overstress the concrete. But he says, look, let's just be conservative and assume that the plate fully covers up uh, wall to wall so that you're not asking for any square root of what? Square root, how much more did you get out of concrete? A2 over A1, that's correct. Right? And if you say, well, I can't remember whether it was A2 over A1, well, of course, that's nonsense because you don't have to. It's written, you know, it's in the code or it's in the specs. But uh, if you don't remember, I mean, that's a gift. If you take the square root of A1 over A2, well, that's no gift. No, that's uh, 1 over 4. Square root of 1 over 4 is something, and that that would kill you. So you know that this is the, the ratio you're looking for to increase the strength because the concrete has some surrounding concrete to help hold up the load. So we'll take our 0.85 FC prime times area of the concrete or the area of the steel, multiply it times an appropriate fee, You'll notice these numbers have been altered here because it's no longer 0 0.6. It's now 0 0.65. Set it greater than the request. It says the area has to be 51.57. 6 times B has got to be 51.57. Solve for B. Here was the one where it was 1.66 inches long. The real length, I guess I ever, yeah, the real length is 31 inches. If we did the other one where it had to be 2.59 inches long to prevent crippling, the length was 20.3 inches to not hurt the concrete. As this thing increases in length, of course, the moment arm increases and the plate has to be a lot thicker. <clears throat> so he has decided to put the plate uh, underneath. He's going to make it uh, 6 inches long. Solve for B. B is equal to area over LB, 8.6 inches. It says round it up to the nearest inch, try a 10-inch thing. Well, I don't mind he wants to round it up to the nearest inch, but that's not the nearest inch. And he may say, well, okay, they really don't like you sending in plates nine by something, you know, like about every two inches, you know, they may even have them sitting around somewhere. I don't know, but uh, you round it up to whatever you like. They're not that expensive going to try a 10-inch wide plate. Now then we need to know how thick the plate should be. That's our last problem. 
first. If you remember, our plate cantilevers out. B over 2 minus K. B over 2 minus K. Or B minus 2K over 2, take your choice. B is 10. K sub design was 1.19. That's the distance from here to here. And therefore, the distance from here to where the thing cantilevers, that's the length of the cantilever is in. Six out 3.81 inches. Length of the plate cantilevers out from the web. The equation that you wrote down and hopefully don't have to derive during the quiz is, I don't know, there wasn't a 2.22, but it was a number over a number. It comes out 2.22. 2.22, request, stick out squared, base, length, 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 yield stress. Plug them in, 1.22. Notice the change in F sub Y. Make it an inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter by six by ten. There's your first column based design. Right? No? Ah, it's a beam bearing plate design. That's correct. Here's your first back to your pages in your text. Same numbers. Try B is equal to 10 inches. There's your first column base plate design. Column sitting on top. All right. Drive carefully. I need the money. That's uh, uh, the concrete we usually use for is 3.5 what we'll be using in this? No. Oh, okay, so we'll just be giving them the problem? That's correct. In other words, the guy pays for what he wants. I don't think three and a half is common anymore. It used to be very common. He yeah, just hadn't changed the numbers. Is used most commonly because right. you get a beta one of 28.5. Well, you'll get that on the 3.5 also. Everything less than 4,000, right? Is yeah, I forget what the what the break point is, to tell you the truth. Beta 1 equals uh, K prime C, or mm, FC prime, F prime C minus something. 4,000 over 4,000. Okay, I believe you. But you get what you pay for. Yeah. If you say, look, I can live with that grade of concrete. It's not, you know, it's a little less expensive because it doesn't have as much cement in it but it makes it a little bigger I can live with. The guy says, look, I'm going all the way up in the new world yeah. tower. I got to have, I forget what it is. It's like 10 or 15,000 PSI concrete down at the bottom. Yeah. Because, you know, that increases his floor space. Okay. So it will be given on, yeah, the, on the quiz. I was curious why we don't have Good question, because it's on the FE exam, uh, and I can't answer the question. And another thing is, really, is timber masonry. Yeah. Masonry is a common. It's huge. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are, when it got to be 128 hours, yeah. you know, we just could yeah, do so many some, things. But there's not a graduate level one or anything. I don't think there's even one in the graduate thing, no. Do you even have one in the pipeline come in, or? Yeah, possibly, but it'll be a completely different thing. They're thinking about, for the environmental people in here, having to pass steel or concrete, you know, and they, the environmental people say, this is just nonsense. We need them to have another environmental class. They're thinking, okay, maybe what we ought to do is make everybody take, like, an hour of steel, an hour of concrete, and an hour of timber masonry, and we make a little class that everybody takes it, including you structures people. And then the real structures classes will know you had that hour, and they'll build from there with a two-hour concrete and a two-hour steel, something like that. 
But that's the only way, and it's a structures measure. You still wouldn't get any timber or masonry. Yeah, because like even if you look down there at the corner, they use timber together. You know, it's absolutely everywhere. <laughs> well, now then, the timber you're talking about, it's not structural work much. Um, well, it's somewhat. Structural. They use it for forms. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's true because it's loaded laterally. <clears throat> the apartment complex over here, all the walls. Are oh there. Lord, man, they got timber. I don't know where they got so many <laughs> trees. But it's, it's so interesting. Like they they have the the concrete, the um, bottom floor. They, it's all concrete. Uh huh. And then the top floor, they started making out of timber. Well, they have some steel in there. think of the weight. Think how much weight they say. They couldn't put a concrete floor on all those timber things. Oh, right. right, right. They just yeah, wouldn't so hold it up. That's right. If you want a first floor concrete, well, then you're going to have to have some concrete columns. Yeah. And if you maybe you want to park cars there, well, then you need three floors of concrete. And it's concrete up to that point. And they put a timber construction above it. Sure. Um, and I don't know the name anymore, but if you'll go to McGraw Hill or you go to any of those people that turn out these turn out these kind of books, any book that really is on timber and on masonry uh, will be 100 percent. I have a couple. Ooh, do you? Would you email me that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, hey, e-books? You uh, mean like for free? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I mean, they're they're out there. So Sokolowski wrote a really top-notch uh, hydraulics book. Whole thing it's on it's on the web. Larry, have you seen that? Um, that uh, I have not. What's it about? It's about the twin towers and some controversy. Oh no, no, no! Another conspiracy theory. <laughs> um, but specifically, you know. Yeah. And so I was wondering if you had looked into that. Any thought I have that? not. But I'll tell you, the world's experts have. They're not on the government payroll trying to hide the government's complic complicity in the event. And they know exactly what wrong, went wrong. And uh, the people like me who say, I think, you know, that somebody really planted a bomb and that this guy in this office did it because that's where it started from. Did Kennedy, did uh, Oswald really shoot Kennedy? You know, just give it up. Take your choice and move on because you're not going to answer that question to some people's no, not, satisfaction. Yeah, not, not quite that answer, but just kind of contemplate on whether it's possible or not because, you know, I can uh, tell you. Well, it's not much you can do about free fall speed with so many tons of stuff. F equals M A. You remember the old guy that dropped the rock from the tower? Yeah, yeah. That's how they figured out. You know that a ball this size of a certain mass, and you take one that has a lot less mass, made out of wood, they both hit the ground. The guy said, "Same time." Right. You can't, you can't alter that stuff. I think the answer, the question has been answered, really. And caught what on? Oh, you mean the collapse on satellite? How would that? How would that be any better than the guy who's got a? Yeah, a direct like, it shot at it. It would be a strange thing to watch, I guess, just kind of just. Yeah, out. yeah. No, I thought you meant maybe that was being used in the conspiracy. No, theory. no, I just saw that. Oh, okay. Look at that. You guys, you caught all this nonsense on tape. They're going to think A&M is nuts.